On this episode of Locked On Angels, I'm going to be honest here, Johnny. Did we really expect a win with Jose Suarez starting? I don't think we did. I don't think anybody did, right? Hey, what's the update on Reed Detmers? We're going to talk about that. And do you see how many people are attending Angel games this season? Does it make you excited or does it make you mad? Let's talk about it. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels. Your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to get back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by our everydayers called eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to keep your ride on the road at ebaymotors.com. Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, it's our third season here at Lockdown Angels, and we're talking Angels baseball every Monday through Friday. For better, for worse, we're here for you, talking about your favorite team. I know that they don't treat us like our Fate, like we're their favorite fans, but you know, no. we we're still <laughs> loyal to this team. Uh, on today's show, we're going to check in on Reed Detmers. How did he do after his triple A start and some interesting attendance numbers? But first, Mike, let's recap that game against the Diamondbacks. It was a nine to four loss. Was this going to go any other way? Well, we'll talk about that in just a second. Why don't you get us started, Mike, with some stats about Jordan Montgomery, the opposing pitcher. Yeah, the Diamondbacks. Yeah, he is a, a three and four, six eighty ERA with a one seven WHIP so far this season. Somebody Ooh. that we had talked about signing potentially yeah. with the Angels. He's an innings eater. Had a great season last year. However, his numbers are a reflection of what happens when you don't get spring training. He right. was not able to get that, and. He can thank Scott Boris for that, and right. so can uh, a few other players, right? They weren't able to get spring training yeah, because Blake they signed Snell late. and yeah. Blake Snell is struggling. You and... know, he's he's changed his management since yep. then. Montgomery did, yeah. So he's yep. he's done with being a, a Scott Boris client at this point. Probably a good move. Uh, Jose Suarez. I don't know if anybody wants to be a uh, uh, client for uh, Jose Suarez or have. Jose him has, has a representing plan. him, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, the guy is just awful. And, you know, we talked about on yesterday's show how uh, he has, or I think it was the day before, we how he has starter mentality. He has it in his heart. Ron Washington his heart, said that. Mike, the power yeah. of friendship. That's I think, what's gonna, I, I think, I think I'm so over those dumb, quotable, yes, put it up on the wall. Yes. Like, like was, that's all that it is. Those inspirational posters that all your teachers had in the classroom with like a skydiver. That's what, yeah. that's what this feels like. Yeah. It feels like Instagram when it first started, right? I'm <laughs> sick of it. So uh, he got the first start of the year for himself. He was planning on throwing 70 to 75 pitches. Um, he came into this game with a 287 ERA in his last 15 and two thirds innings pitched. So, of course, um, he doesn't pitch well. So let's no. jump into the game real quick, Johnny. Uh, bottom of the second, old friend alert, Randall Grichuk. Yeah. Triple. Of course, it's Randall Grichuk that, that tears us up and didn't play well at all for us last season. Oh, he played well, but it was after the Angels were completely out of it and traded and wavered all their trades that they that's why it doesn't for. count yeah it doesn't yeah. nobody wanted him by the way right yeah nobody <laughs> wanted him and then he and then he gets hot at the end of the, great thanks a lot randy <laughs> yeah yeah uh with with him on base then corbin carroll hits a triple and the yeah. uh, d-backs go up but one nothing then there's a hit by a pitch and then there's a base hit from perdomo it's two nothing carson fulmer's warming up in the bullpen at this point great yeah. and uh, top of the, of the second, order by the way <laughs> yeah top of the order with Marte again there was a double play to get out of that inning. So that was the bottom of the second inning. Johnny, take us to the top of the third. Top of the third, Stefana gets a base hit. A wild pitch moves him up to second base. There's a ground out from Renhefo that moves him to third. Ward hits an RBI double, so that makes it two to one Diamondbacks. Then Kevin Pilar goes the other way for a ball that hops over the fence. Mike makes it two to two, which was great to see them get back into it. But then Suarez gave it right back. In yeah. the bottom of the third, a leadoff double to Gabriel Marino, a deep fly out actually holds the runner at second. Uh, I was shocked that Taylor Ward was able to hold a runner at second. Uh, 
There was a check swing yeah. strikeout to Christian Walker. Then a two out, two run home run from Randall Grichuk. And again, of course, Randall Grichuk right. gets that home run. He actually came close to the cycle in this one. All he needed was the single. He didn't get it. Uh, Suarez comes out. Carson Fulmer gets the K to end the inning. Mike, Jose Suarez's final line, two and two thirds innings pitched. Four earned runs, six hits, three Ks, one walk on 65 pitches. Michael, should we have expected anything else in this start? No, that's Jose Suarez. And he's just a guy that you can't rely on. And it's really fascinating that they're just keeping him around. I don't why know did they, they why did they tell us we didn't need another starter until June 15th? And right. that is because they had the same amount of days. It would have been as if their spot in the rotation came up when it should have come up. It should have been Jose Soriano today. I don't what, yeah. what is that? I don't know why they're giving them the extra day off. There hasn't been any communication on that. But the reality is, is that I, I, this guy must have some dirt on the Angels because he just keeps getting put into a position where he can let everybody down and not pitch yeah. well. And I know that there's this narrative of we got to get him right. And, and he, there's a pitcher inside of him. But again, those are the platitudes. Those are the narratives that are up on the wall that mean nothing. They're just your purpose statement. And then that's it. You're not actually living by any sort of purpose at all with Jose Suarez. Not sure why he's still on this team. And I know, I know that you're commenting some of you ever dares are commenting and saying DFA Suarez. I get it. Yeah. Let's, let's do something about this guy right. instead of rolling him back out there. I don't understand why a Kenny Rosenberg wouldn't have worked here. I don't understand why a Davis Daniel wouldn't have worked here. Right. It feels like it just feels like he's got something on the angels, right? Like, is he, you know, quietly holding their families hostage? I don't know what's happening. He here. knows everything about the betting scandal that was going on between David Fletcher and Epe. So he's got dirt on everybody. That's my theory. Mike, we're moving to the bottom of the fourth, not because anything uh, major happened, but there was a, uh, a fly out to Taylor Ward and the runners advanced. Gooby noted that he should have thrown to second to keep that runner on first base. Now we'll get into why I bring that up here in just a second, but bottom of the fifth, there was a ground out from Guriel, a fly out to Adele from Walker. Grichok hit Grichuk hits a double and so he's one single away from the cycle at this point. There's a hit by pitch to a Eugenio Suarez, a walk to Carroll. The bases are loaded at this point. A wild pitch scores Grichuk. That makes it five to two Diamondbacks and then a ground out to end the inning. It's still close at this point, Mike. Yeah. It's top of the sixth. The uh, Taylor Ward gets a solo home run to left field, 105.5 off the bat, 391 feet. It made it five to three. And so <laughs> then there was this moment after a Pilar flyout. Calhoun has a foot race to the bag with Jordan Montgomery. He's called out. The review shows that Calhoun's foot definitely hit the side of the base before Montgomery's, but the call stands Mike. And at this point, why do we have replay? Why yeah. is there any reason why we have, Oh, let's go to New York and have these umpires check it because it never works. Yeah. How do you see something so clear and so obvious that you can't overturn a call? It just makes it, so ridiculous. Uh, there was a two out double over Corbin Carroll. He got twisted up out there, but then he uh, redeemed himself by catching one that Sean well hit into the gap, but Carroll was just too fast and he caught up to it. Carroll, by the way, who is not having a great season also was a home run away from the cycle in this one. Now, Mike, the bottom of the sixth is where things really fell apart at this point. Uh, Carson Fulmer still in there. He gets a ground out and a walk. Adam Simber comes in. Jose Marte, or sorry, Cattell Marte steals. And Simber isn't even watching him do this. Yeah. Like, uh, Gab Gab Gabby Marino hits a double, scores Marte, makes it six to three. There's a base hit to Guriel, puts runners on the corners. There's a fly out to Pilar, and Kevin Pilar says, Taylor Ward, I'm going to show you how to hold the runners. <laughs> and he gets the ball and holds the runner at third, which is great. There's a foul ball uh, from Grichuk again, of course, and it hits Ohapi where no adult man wants to be hit, Michael, right. and it takes right. him out of the game. Hopefully yeah. he's doing okay. We also found out that Taylor Ward had some back stiffness and he came out of this game too. So Thice comes in for him as if Randall Grichuk's cycle wasn't annoying enough. I mean, he, di he didn't get it, but <laughs> now his foul ball is the one that hurt Oh, hoppy. So the, there's a walk to Grichuk. The bases are loaded. Ben Joyce comes in and he gets a ground out to third base to end that inning. Yeah. Top of the seventh angels uh, come back up and Joe Adele gets one uh, hit right up the middle. And then Zach Neto hits one back to the pitcher and Adele gets to go to second base. It was 106.9 miles an hour off the bat. <laughs> hit the pitcher in the leg. Yeah. That looked 
tough yeah revenge for uh, oh hoppy maybe <laughs> right uh, stefanik is striking out looking and then adele steals third for tries some reason. tries like, like yeah wh- why is he stealing third like He's at second base. Granjifo is, I don't, I don't understand why he's moving there because he's going to score on a single. He's that fast. So it just yeah. felt like a really dumb decision. And then there was a conversation in the bull in the dugout between wash and Adele, which uh, tells afterwards. me that it wasn't Washington's call for Adele to do that. It was all Adele trying to do that. And look, you had run uh at that point, I think Ward was still in the game and then Pilar. So there's no reason to, yeah. to, I mean, and you're right. A single, scores him right if, even if Renhifa walks you still have Ward coming up in that situation so it was clearly not a Washington decision because he was giving Joe the business in the dugout helping him understand like what are you doing right there uh, bottom of the seventh there's a Corbin Carroll singer single a uh, K to Jock Peterson Perdomo hits a bunt base hit there's a walk the bases are loaded it's one out Marino hits a base hit the other way it's seven to three Diamondbacks Strickland's in there's a two RBI single and Hifo could have gotten Guriel out at first, who was three quarters of the way to second, uh, but he threw to second and didn't get the out at first. And you saw, you could see Zach Neto and Matt Theis both, both pointing to second. And so I don't know what decision was going on there, but no. that point made it nine to three Diamondbacks. And then Ward made a great catch on a fly out from Grichuk. Uh, top of the eighth, there was a Moniac single, a Calhoun walk. Theis had an RBI double which would have been a home run in 25 ballparks, Mike, but it made it nine to four diamondbacks after that. There really was nothing doing for the rest of the game. Now, Wayne Randazzo had an interesting comment and he said that the diamondbacks look like the team they were last year, stringing together hits, putting the ball in play. Should we expect anything less from the angels to help this team get right? What do you say? The angels just look overwhelmed in games like this. This is a typical angel game where they're close and then they just get so scared or nervous or they, they are their pitching ability or hitting ability or defensive ability falls out the side of their head. And it just is one of those games where you're like, who am I watching? There's a joke in amongst angel fans and everydayers know this. These these are the quad a angels, right? Like they're not triple a, but they're not major league. And so they, they played like that last night. And unfortunately they've had a lot of games like this, which is why those narratives of, you know, the, the stuff you're going to put up on the wall, the poster, the skydiving, you know, quote, like it's why those are just so annoying. It's so annoying. I want honest, real talk and i and i don't want you know just platitudes of like hey he's got he's got a starter in him he's got that dog in him no (laughs) he's more of a kitty that's really who so jose suarez is and so i i didn't have obviously expectations high expectations for this game with suarez starting kind of didn't make sense why he was starting and then to see the offense not really come through and then just the just bonehead decisions again, John, like yeah. Taylor Ward, like everybody knows you throw it to second base. Where, where are you throwing the ball? Right. You have had so many opportunities this year. Nobody's talked to you. And if nobody's talked to you, then what are they doing? Yeah. I mean, that's the reality of this situation with Taylor Ward is like, man, you're earning that DH spot, homie. That's what right. you're earning. And Adele trying to steal third. There's no reason for that. Renhifo throwing to the wrong base and his uh, cohorts telling him to throw it to the wrong base. And then bad decision making all around, Mike. We got to put this one on wash for believing Jose Suarez could be a viable starter in this game when you have options. You didn't, first of all, you didn't even need to bring somebody up. You had the Mm -hmm. off day. And so the schedule was just fine. And again, what happened to June 15th? I'm still trying to figure that out. Right. And so just bad decision making all around really cost the Angels in this one, whether it was to start Suarez, whether it was throw into the wrong base or not holding the runner when you needed to, or trying to steal third in a situation where you had no business making the last out at third base with arguably your best hitter other than Kevin Pillar up at the, at the plate. So just lots of mind boggling, bad decision-making all around. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. The Angels are back at it, making more poor decisions at 640 Pacific Time <laughs> against the Diamondbacks. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM of the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, let's check in on Reed Detmers and see how he's progressing down in AAA. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Johnny, we know that there are three inevitables in life. There is death, the angels will let you down and there are taxes, right? Yes. Those are the three things. And this is why you and I need tax USA network. I had a tax issue earlier this year, 
needed some wisdom, reached out to these guys. They were so helpful in bringing some clarity. Just because tax season is over, by the way, doesn't mean the IRS, not the wrestler, but the actual Internal Revenue Service will come after you for unfiled taxes. They can garnish your wages. They can levy your bank accounts, even seize your property. You don't want that. You don't want IRS targeting you. So that's why you need to let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax USA Network go to bat for you with over 14 years of experience and get this an a plus rating by the better business bureau tax network usa has saved their clients over one billion dollars in tax debt whether you owe taxes have complicated matters that's really what i had uh, they are here to help you or maybe you just finally want to hit you hit that parlay and you need to know how to file that, you can call the Tax Network USA company. They're they're fantastic. And here's a number for you, 1-800-549-1000. That's 1-800-549-1000. Or visit their website, tnusa.com slash locked on. That's tnusa.com slash locked on. There's also a link in this episode description. And today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. It's America's number one sports app with more than 5 million members. I'm one. John is one, and we would love for you to be one as well. It's super easy to use. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. All your favorite players from the Diamond are available, and you can pick if they're going to do this or that, whether it's less or more. Strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs, you make your pick and then lock it in and can win some big money, and you get payouts really quickly with Apple Pay quick and easy deposit into your account. So download the prize pick app right now. We've been talking about it. It's time to do it. Enter our promo code locked on MLB. They're going to give you a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. So download price picks, enter our, our promo code locked on MLB, get a hundred dollar match. First deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And every day, if you haven't made the switch, you got to do so to Lockdown Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program just for you to bring you the biggest stories across the sports world. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, news, opinions, all the good stuff you're looking for. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And speaking of your team every day, the Angels playing those Diamondbacks. Those snakes, again, once again on the road at 6.40 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. John Reed Detmers had his first start in AAA Salt Lake. Uh, it was against Houston's AAA team um, after being demoted mm-hmm. last weekend, so two weekends ago. Uh, here's the stats from that start. Five innings, ten hits, seven runs, all earned, eight Oof. strikeouts, no walks, and four home runs now right after this start wash was asked about what he thought about reed detmer's start he said he hadn't seen the full report um and he said he reiterated that he's more concerned about the process and the landing of his pitches than the actual results so landing of his pitches means that they want him hitting his spots now we've mm-hmm. shared on locked on angels that reed has been missing his spots especially yeah. on the corner he did really well earlier this season but Johnny, you pointed out that he had been missing those spots and people had been taking advantage of that. So to improve this, they were working on his mechanics. We knew at the major league level, they were trying to tighten up his windup, but they also wanted Reed to land in the same spot after every pitch, no matter what he's throwing. So mm. that's specifically what they're working on right now in the minor league. So what does this start and the stats of this start show us? Like it doesn't seem great. It seems like a unfortunate Reed Detmer start, right? With all of the runs that he gave up and a lot of hits, but here's what the angels are focusing on. No walks and a lot of hits. Hmm. Here's, here's why they're focusing on that. It means with not walking anybody, he's throwing pitches in the strike zone. Yes. And because he's, he's given up a lot of hits, he's hitting his spots. He's not missing. Hmm. and He's not throwing balls. Now the hits and the runs according to the angels are indications that he's doing what they want him to do. Hmm. The next right step for Reed Detmers is to hit his spots and miss some bats. That makes sense. So this is what's happening right now in that first start. Johnny question for you. Does that encourage you that information excite you about maybe Reed is turning some things around and figuring some things out. When you look at it from that perspective of, 
is he hitting his spots and not missing the strike zone, then yes, that is encouraging because I got to be honest with you. I saw the results and I think I had the same reaction that everybody else did. Like, what the heck happened? Is, is he done? Is he cooked? Is, yeah. he, is it over? Is the yeah. is Detmer's day coming to an end, Mike? Yeah. But if you explain it in those terms of, hey, you're going down to AAA, all we want you to do is locate. And whether you get hit around or not doesn't matter. You need to be pitting, putting these pitches in the zone. And to know that that's what he was working on, and now – the next step is missing those bats. I think that that is encouraging. Now, would you say the ideal situation is hit your spots and miss bats in the first outing? Yes, I'd say that. Yeah. But at the same time, I understand the thought process in giving him one thing to do at a time. You know what this reminds me of, Mike? It's a stretched out spring training. He's mm -hmm. able to go five innings. And the line scores in spring training don't look great. Yeah. More often than not, even in short outings that are, you know, one inning, two, three, four. And by the time you're ready to go for the season, you're probably up to five, six innings. And uh, for Reed to go five innings in this one and work on just hitting that strike zone with his stuff, because that's really what the problem's been. It, yep. It's nothing's changed in the velocity on his pitches. Nothing has changed in the movement of his pitches, everything has been the same. So that's why everybody was questioning well, what's different. Yeah. And so to hear that he's trying to land in the same spot for any pitch, doesn't matter what the pitch is. I think that that is an important mechanical change. I also think that just focusing on one thing at a time is encouraging because again, to do it all at once, isn't the point. And to have a great line score, isn't the point. I think that's why I compare it to spring training. This is, Hey, I'm going out there today and I'm just going to throw my slider a million times to get it right. You know, that's what yeah. pitchers do in spring yeah. training. They want to work on some stuff. And, and that's what this is to me. It's a, it's an extended spring training. I'm going to go work on this mechanical issue and find out what's going on. So yeah, those are my thoughts there. I, after looking at these stats and then hearing some of the things they're working on, I think he's going to be there a while. And, and, my, and that would and make what sense. I, what I said earlier is, is I, if I'm, if I'm the angels, I'm keeping him there. August. September, you, no, like, you said September. You said the 21st yeah. night of September. No, you didn't <laughs> say that. Uh, but you know what? I'm I was hold, really specific. Wow. Like I, like I said, uh, I'm holding you read responsible for this. So, yes. I know yeah. it's my fault, but I feel like he's going to be there for a while because this feels like a slow process, which would be so unangel like to keep him true in the minor leagues to work on stuff because this team's going to the playoffs. They want to win right now. Right. <laughs> and so, but it makes sense for a team that actually is honest with themselves and says, well, this guy's got to be one of our key pieces in the rotation. Mm -hmm. So let's get this 24 year old young man. Let's get him right. So that when he's in the major leagues, he's not getting crushed and we're ruining his confidence and not allowing him to be who he can be. So feels like he'll be there for a while, according to what we read and according to the stats. I could see a couple more starts from Reed Detmers, and I think that they're going to want to see the stats improve because he's going to be missing some bats. But if you don't see those stats improve, it's just an indication that he's probably still hitting the strike zone. Notice no walks. Mm -hmm. However, if you see a lot of hits and a lot of runs, then, then Reed hasn't taken the next step just yet. Eight strikeouts to me says that he's he did pretty well in that one. So it was a mm -hmm. lot of there was a lot of swing and miss. There was a lot of getting guys to chase, but it was also giving up a lot of contact because yeah. again, all you're focusing on is hitting that square, that invisible <laughs> strike zone over the plate. Now, Mike, question for you: What's more damaging to your confidence? Is it being up in the majors and getting shelled like he was? Or is it getting demoted to AAA? What do you think? Oh, man, that's a great question. I think for right now, uh, Reed, Reed getting crushed in the majors seemed like it had a really big effect on him when he yeah. would be interviewed afterwards. And his he got response, emotional. Yeah. His response, it, it bleeping sucks, was his response to that. And so I think the demotion to the minor leagues – wasn't a shot at his ego or a shot at his confidence. Right. I think he knew it was coming. And so I think he was already crushed. And so this is a chance for him to catch his breath, reset his mind, get his mechanics right, 
so that he could be the guy that he was at the beginning of the year. Yeah, in a, in a year like this, this is the perfect time for Reed Detmers to go out there, get right, and figure things out. And again, I think this is the perfect situation. We'll keep informing you guys, our everydayers, of what the progress is with Reed Detmers because that's something we know you're interested in. Mike and I are definitely interested in it, so we'll keep you posted on Reed Detmers. Friends, you got to check out ebaymotors.com, one of the best websites. If you're working on your car, your truck, or your SUV, they have everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and even level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers and roof racks and exhaust kits and LED headlights and so much more. Whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And Johnny, with over 122 million parts for your auto, you'll find exactly what you're looking for at eBay Motors. And they got an eBay guarantee fit, which means that you get a part, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back because they want you to burn rubber, not burn cash. So with all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP that you need and bring home that win. So keep that car or that truck or that SUV alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply, and the eBay guarantee fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, which one of you out there, I'm pointing if you're not watching on the video side, which one of you are going to the games and patting Artie's pockets and giving him all the rep? No, I'm just I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> that's an argument that you're going to hear from a lot of Angels fans. Yep. Uh, and, and certainly attendance, despite their standings, Mike, are not a problem. Yeah. Now, let me give you some numbers here. Uh, the the uh, last weekend against the Astros, they had three huge nights did. at angel stadium friday the paid attendance was thirty six thousand five hundred uh, three hundred and fifty four. by the way our wonderful friends keith and heidi did go to that game with their son and their daughters by the way their two sons and daughters i should say so there was a total of six of them yep so they were having a family night out no judgment <laughs> and they picked up some trout bobbleheads. They did. And they happened to give me one and they gave you one. And yep. so Keith, you know, my eternal BFF, of course, <laughs> of course, uh, got me this, uh, this one. And uh, so I'm very grateful to Keith and Heidi for, for doing that for us. And Keith, of course, is an everyday or he listens to us in his car all the time. So that was Friday. Okay. Saturday paid attendance. 2000 more. Yep. 38,217. And of course there's fireworks. After the game, who doesn't love fireworks, right. right? You know, it's summertime, you get outside, there's fireworks. Mike, Sunday, paid attendance, 42,703, yep. and that was the Zach Neto Youth Jersey giveaway. It was in the style of the City Connects, Yep. and so there were a lot of kids in the building on Sunday, all wearing their City Connects, and of course, Zach Neto was uh, a big part of that win. Obviously, the Ohapi walk-off was yep. what did it. But overall attendance for the Halos is actually down around 6% year over year. The average last year was 31,900. This year, 29,700. Mike, does this attendance, the way that the fans are still showing up, does it? are you fascinated by this attendance or are you frustrated what do you say i'm frustrated here's why i'm frustrated okay because the angels fans have proven that they're going to show up no matter what mm. and the team's response has been oh yeah we're trying to win yeah trying gonna, to win gonna All be right. competitive so we're gonna win so much that we're gonna put cole tucker out there at third <laughs> right no offense cole tucker i mean you you're you're awesome we're glad you're on the team but you and i both know that this team's not winning with you playing third base or left right. field or DHing, and everybody. It's not a playoff caliber championship team, Mike. It's when the Quad A Angels, right? And so that's why it's frustrating because these fans are showing up for this team, and the response has not been in kind. We're going to show up for the fans, and we're going to provide a team that's going to be successful and it's going to win and is going to prove that they can hit with runners in scoring position and they're going to play good, smart, fundamental baseball and throw to second when they need to throw to second. Those types of things. <laughs> 
It's just not been the case this year. And yeah. last night's game was a good example of that. So it's frustrating. I'm never going to get mad at fans for showing up because I right. show up and it's a fun experience. And I think for a lot of OC fans, especially in Anaheim, like a lot of the time we're showing up because it's a great social event to hang out with friends. Yeah. When the angels are good though, angel fans are awesome. They're engaged. They're loud. They're 100%. fun to be around. It's a blast to be at that stadium. They were loud because the Astros were in town and I know they were booing Altuve and Bregman, but like just any time that the angels took advantage of what the Astros were doing, it was like, uh, uh, the crowd was roaring. It was yep. so obvious and you could hear it. That's what's so frustrating. Mike is we have such a passionate fan base. And again, you and I will never tell anybody how to fan quote unquote. Right. We, we aren't going to tell you to stop going to games or we aren't going to tell you like, you should go to every game. You know, yeah. like that is a, a personal decision on how you spend your money. And again, do you remember the days when you could have like a Disney pass and just go out there on a Friday night just and just show up yep. and just show up. Right. And now it's like, I need a mortgage to get a right. Disney pass. Um, but it, back in the day, it was like, Hey, that's a fun Friday night thing to do. Let's go. And I feel like angel stadium, is the same way. It's a fun Friday yeah. night thing to do because tickets are cheap. You yeah. can get in. The attendance is up uh, the way it was this past weekend. I'm sure the giveaways had something to do with it. I'm sure that the Ast like the weather's nice. The Astros are in town. You want to see the Angels beat them, even though they took one game out of three. Right. <laughs> but all of that to say, it's it's a social event. And like our friends, they took their they took their four kids with them to the game because they had a good time and they were able to get tickets for that. It's a cheap night out for a family more often than not, especially when you've got the deals that they've got. So I I'm with you. I'm not frustrated at fans. Yeah. I'm frustrated for fans because like you said, we continue to show up. We continue to want this team to be good. We continue to be there for the guys that we're excited about like Logan O'Hoppy and Sean O'Well and Neto and Moniac. Those guys we're excited for them, but the, but we get taken advantage of by ownership. We get taken advantage of our loyalty gets taken advantage of. And I think that's the most frustrating part about this whole conversation is that angel fans deserve better. And I think other fan bases know that too. I've heard that from other fan bases uh, and there's a lot of sympathy and empathy, but angel fans deserve better. And I hope that we get that better soon. <laughs> Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels play the Diamondbacks again on the road at 640 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Rose on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over to YouTube, find today's episode, get in the comment section, hit that like button and subscribe button on your way down to your comment, and we'll do our best to get back to you. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck? For Thursday show. Well, Locked On Angels Hall of Famer Taylor Blake Ward released the first mock draft for Ooh. the MLB draft coming up. And, the, of course, the Angels have the eighth pick. And so he gave a name and a reason why. And so we're going to share all of those details with you, who they're going to select, possibly, and why, on Locked On Angels. Man, when it comes to draft picks and minor leagues... Taylor Blake Ward knows his stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting into that conversation. All right, friends, we hope you'll come back and join us for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Thursday. Don't make any bad decisions today. We, I've seen enough bad decision-making <laughs> yes, in last night's game. Come on.